you said, let's be truthful. Let's be truthful. Do you see I'm looking at you eye to eye, all right? From one side of the Atlantic Ocean to the other, if that's even possible. Is that the Atlantic Ocean? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Habib, I know you've seen him. I know you've talked. Give us the truth. Mm-hmm. Now, don't give us this, what we got on Saturday. I'm not even, I'm not even going there, okay? I'm not even talking about the decision part two, which was worse <laughs> than the first decision with LeBron and, and in Stanford at the Boys and Girls Club. I'm not even talking about what that was all about. What's the truth? Where's he at? How's he feeling? I know you've talked. Break it down for us. Let's go. Then none, none of this. I'm his friend. I didn't ask him. Hey, I, this. I, this, this. this is crazy. You know what's crazy? I spoke to Habib every day. Every day when he was in quarantine, before he had the decision, yes. which I thought was fantastic. Stop um, it. Stop great it. television. I mean, it built and it built and it built to the moment yeah. that Habib told everyone, maybe, maybe I will fight again. I don't know. It was fantastic. It was, it was. What a payoff. It was drama. It was drama at the highest level. Um, yes. Theater at its finest, right? Yes. Theater at its finest. Ariel. We spoke about eating dinner together. We spoke about playing video games. We spoke about American football. We exchanged YouTube videos, but we never once talked about his fighting career. We just don't. What a friend. It's a, I mean, what a horrible it, it, friend. You, you, know, you know what else I did today? I presented what? him the UFC honors submission of the year. Hmm. That was it. Well, like we you actually gave him the award? I gave, Yeah, I went and gave him the award. He was doing some social media stuff. I came out of my fighter meetings and I gave him the award. And then I gave him a hug and we made plans to have dinner. But we don't. I didn't talk to him about his fight career. Because as I said before, I support whatever that young man does. And if he fights, great. Who I would love to call another Habib fight. But if he doesn't, I support that too. I'll see him when everybody else fights, when when the camps start taking place at AKA again, we'll just all get back together and have fun as we used to. And that's really what matters, you know? So when you're face-to-face with Khabib Nurmagomedov and then you're about to go tape your show, highly successful, extremely yeah. popular program on the worldwide leader, you don't say, hey, we don't need it. Hey, that's the thing, something. we don't need it. We can't be, we can't, we can't start taking our friendships to try to elevate our status as a show. We have to have good information and people have to like you and I also sure. as we present them that information. We can't rely on anyone else. This is our show. This is DC and Hawaii. And guess what? We are the best thing going, baby. And if you don't like us for us, woo, it's on <laughs> you. We're, be- we're, we're the limousine riding, jet flying duo to, of ESPN, the tag team broadcasting champions of the world. So yes, I do want and need we do need to break things but ultimately we have to be able to stand on you and i and not take our friendships to okay so let me say this i'm not surprised i'm not surprised that he hasn't announced his return as i told you from the beginning leave the guy alone his reasons are valid they're family reasons uh i didn't like the way the whole thing went down on saturday but that being said yeah come on i didn't like that but hey how about this I'm not even surprised that the belt isn't on the line because I think a lot of people thought like, hey, he could come back in a year, but let's vacate the yes. title. I'm not even surprised about that. I think they don't want to put the belt on the line on Saturday to make the next one for Connor if he wins, of course, a title fight and hope, hope that it's Habib fighting mm-hmm. Connor McGregor, right? Like, I, th- I feel like they're very clear about that. So I'm well, not even surprised the- that nothing happened, that the title wasn't even vacated. And by the well, way, this the- fight doesn't even need a belt, right? Like, no, this fight it doesn't, doesn't need a title. Belt. It doesn't need a title. And honestly, if Habib was to vacate and come back, he doesn't need a title. He right. can come back as the challenger and everything could just stay the same. Habib, you're not the champ anymore? Okay, we'll still pay you pay-per-view. We'll still pay you your rate as the champ. It doesn't matter. You're still the guy. So um, we are dealing with two athletes now at 155 pounds that don't really need the belt. Connor doesn't need the belt. Habib doesn't need the belt. They can compete as just athletes and fight. George St. Pierre didn't need the belt. It was great that he had it always, but he didn't need the belt anymore. People are going to watch George St. Pierre. These guys don't need that title, but you're right. Connor McGregor wins. If Connor McGregor wins, tough fight against Dustin Poirier. For sure, for sure. If he gets the job done, he looks impressive. You can go back to Habib and say, hey, Dude looks like he's gotten better. You know, what do you think? And if Habib goes, sure, let's do it. Great. Now you got your big fight. Habib says no. You say, hey, Habib, if you do decide to come back, you'll get the first title shot. So if you want to vacate, then go ahead and vacate. But again, we're looking at a guy that fought in what? Did he fight in November or October? October, end of October. 
November, December, June. Two months. He fought two months ago. Why would you be why would you be stripping some guy of a title that fought two months ago? I get it. He said he was retired. But if you're not racing to pull the belt off of him, it's not a big deal. We've seen fighters be champions for a year, two years without defending the belt. So just give it some time. Let him have some time to figure out what he wants to do, especially when he's making so much money doing other things. Guy has a mobile, he has a mobile network now. I mean, he has a, a fitness workout app. He's got shoes. He's got watches. He's got businesses. He's a promoter now. He's doing, he's doing, he's so busy that I'm not sure he's even had a moment to sit back and think, do I want to put all of this on hold and go back into training camp? 